Hi, I'm John Borhek with VMSource's Virtualization. We'd like to welcome you to our course about the free edition of the VMware Hypervisor, also known as ESXi. VMSource's Virtualization specializes in providing the highest quality VMware training and consulting available anywhere. We've created this complimentary course in order to help users better understand the installation and configuration of the free VMware Hypervisor. Let's discuss what this course covers. For those of you who are the impatient type, you might want to skip directly to Module 2. Otherwise, let's spend 10 minutes covering the basics. Module 1, Introduction. That's what we're doing right now. Next, in Module 2, we're going to install the VMware Hypervisor. In Module 3, we're going to configure the VMware Hypervisor, also known as ESXi. Module 4 is building virtual machines and installing VMware tools. In Module 5, we do a P2V migration with the VMware Converter. Last, in Module 6, we're going to create a virtual router with PFSense so your ESXi can be a multi-purpose host for virtual machines as well as a router and firewall. In the last half century, computing has evolved full circle. In 1965, computers weighed tons, occupied buildings, and cost millions. Researchers at IBM invented the first hypervisor to apportion resources on expensive, highly centralized equipment. By 1980, computers had shrunk to the point that decentralized computing was a reality. Businesses could now own their own equipment and manage their own resources. When 1995 rolled around, not only had the x86 revolution taken hold, but the Internet had gone private, leading to massive proliferation of servers. It was clear that a better solution was necessary. Now, in 2010, computing is well on its way to being centralized again with servers running on massively provisioned hosts which are located in data centers. Cloud computing is the remain framing of computing resources today. Let's discuss some terms and concepts. ESXi is also known as the VMware Hypervisor. This is the basic package which is installed on hardware just like an operating system and makes possible virtualization. Host. VMware uses this term interchangeably with ESX or ESXi. We don't like the term host so much because it can mean so much more than an ESX or ESXi server, like a web server which hosts websites. When we are referring to an ESXi server, we will try to refer to it as such, an ESX or ESXi server. Virtual Machine A virtual machine is a container which is capable of installing and or running an operating system. You can create a virtual machine, set aside resources on an ESX or ESXi server, and then not do anything with it. Guest is an operating system running on a hypervisor within a virtual machine container. In practice, most of the time virtual machine implies both the container and functioning operating system. COS, console operating system. This is the operating system or portion of the operating system which is responsible for providing a user interface on the server itself. On Windows, the COS is the shell called explorer.exe. On Linux, it is usually a shell called bash. General Purpose Vestigial Operating System Basically, we're talking about Windows and Linux here. Operating systems which were not created specifically for virtualization, rather they're intended to provide resources for a myriad of applications which might include virtualization. Bootstrapping Bootstrapping is a technique by which a simple computer program is required to activate a more complicated system of programs. Bootloader A bootloader is a program which is required to bootstrap an operating system. Grub is usually used as the bootloader for Linux and ntldr.exe for Windows. An ISO image is a disk image of an optical disk. ISO images can be created from optical disks or can be used to recreate optical disks from a file. The key concept to understanding virtualization is knowing what a hypervisor is. Hypervisors provide the resources for virtual machines to run and claim those resources either from the host operating system or directly from hardware. Let's look at the two categories or types of hypervisor. On the left we have type 2 or hosted virtualization. In this scenario the hypervisor runs as an application service on top of a full traditional operating system and all hardware is presented by the host operating system like Windows or Linux to the virtual machines. On the right we have type 1 or bare metal virtualization. With bare metal virtualization the hypervisor runs in conjunction with or in place of a traditional operating system and actual hardware resources from the host server are apportioned directly to virtual machines. In the beginning all x86 hypervisors ran in conjunction with general purpose operating systems 
no matter if they were Type 1 or Type 2. VMware's first product, VMware Workstation, was released in 1999 and remains the classic implementation of Type 2 hosted virtualization. ESX Server was released in 2001 as Type 1 bare metal virtualization, yet it continued to require a more or less fully functional Linux operating system for management until very recently. Microsoft Hyper-V and Zen Server, while technically implementations of Type 1 virtualization, continue to leverage a full deployment of a traditional operating system to bootstrap and manage their hypervisors. VMware ESXi was first released in the beginning of 2008 and changed the game for production hypervisors today. VMware effectively eliminated the need for a traditional vestigial operating system running on the server hardware, replacing it only with a hypervisor and a highly limited console interface. While it is true that by eliminating the console operating system you do reclaim resources, with today's production servers sized as they are, that's not a significant motivator. The real benefits are gained in terms of management flexibility, allowing administrators to provision the management resources where and when they would like, even possibly as a virtual machine known as the vSphere Management Appliance. Let's look at an example of an older version of ESX server booting and take note of when various services start. Initially, all you see is Red Hat Linux. Still Red Hat. Pretty soon you're going to see some VM kernel services start. That is the beginning of virtualization under ESX 3.5 and previous. There we go. There's virtualization starting right now. All right. That's the splash screen for a fully booted ESX 3.5 server. As you saw, we basically loaded Red Hat and then we started the hypervisor. Now let's look at ESXi. ESXi is just the VMware hypervisor with onboard management limited to configuration of management network IP addresses. Here's virtualization starting right now. And this is a fully booted ESXi server. What's the difference between ESX 4.1? and ESXi 4.1? ESX 4.1 is the VMware hypervisor and a pre-configured Linux virtual machine called the Service Console, which provides a full command line operating system on each ESX server. With ESX 4.1 it is possible to directly configure the hypervisor, set up and browse local storage, SAN, NFS, and iSCSI volumes to configure networking and also to manage virtual machines. Basically, during the boot process here, what we saw was that the hypervisor loaded first, and the remainder of all of the services are loading as a virtual machine running on top of the hypervisor. Here comes traditional Linux. With the free VMware hypervisor, using the vSphere client, you can create and run virtual machines. You can connect to a SAN. You can use NFS shares. You can create and manage VMware standard vSwitches, and you can increase your license entitlement at any time by purchasing a license entitlement from an authorized reseller like VM Sources. Some of the limitations of the free VMware hypervisor include the fact that it's entitled for standalone use only. You can't connect to a vCenter server, which precludes the use of many VMware services like vMotion, HA, DRS, fault tolerance, clones, templates, sysprep, and much more. While you can connect with some of the remote command line interfaces like the VCLI or VMA, your queries will be limited to read only. You're only allowed up to 256 gigs of RAM per server. Wow, only 256 gigs of RAM per server. Boy, that doesn't seem like much of a limitation. And symmetric multiprocessing, VSMP, is limited to four CPUs. That means even if your system has 16 CPUs or 16 cores, you're only going to be able to give four of them to a virtual machine at any one given point in time. Let's talk about choosing a server. Use the VMware Hardware Compatibility Guide, the address is on the screen, or you can go to www.vmware.com forward slash go forward slash HCL, and you can search for a server which is listed as being compatible with the VMware Hypervisor or ESXi. 
Some people prefer to install the VMware hypervisor or ESXi on a white box. There are a lot of resources available online, but we know that your hardware must be true 64-bit capable. You'll also need a supported NIC. These include the Intel Pro 1000 and Broadcom Gigabit family of server adapters, and you'll need a SCSI or supported SATA controller. When you power your server on the first time, set the BIOS time and date, update the firmware, enable hardware-assisted virtualization, Intel VT or AMD V for any available CPUs, and configure the directly attached storage volumes. VMware continues to recommend RAID 1 for attached SCSI arrays. That concludes the introduction to VMSource's free course in the VMware hypervisor. To continue with Module 2, please visit us at www.vmsources.com. Thanks for watching.